You guys, today has been so much fun. I feel like I've learned so much about turkey and proper preparation and flavors. This has been such a busy morning, but I'm here to tell you, you got your final cooking demo brought to you by the makers of Jenny O Turkey brand. My name is Laurie March. I'm an HGTV remodeler, a kitchen whisperer, and an avid urban gardener. You know, when you grow vegetables, the thing is you got to learn how to cook them, right? You get that abundant harvest and suddenly you got to figure out what to do with it all. So, so many of my best recipes have certainly come from the garden. I'm so excited to be here. This is, I, I honestly, I'm so hungry. I need to like move on to eating something fabulous after this because this has been a good time. Just to kind of reiterate, I think we all know this, the holidays are gonna look a little bit differently this year. Um, just a little different, you know? Like maybe you're used to showing up with just a ton of side dishes. Somebody else is doing the bird cooking at their house or maybe you're like me for years. I was truly relegated to just bringing the rolls because I was not good at cooking anything. I was the one who brought the rolls or the soda or whatever. And so over the years I've gotten much better at cooking and I'm slowly graduating into, you know, the side dishes and, and maybe this year I'm even gonna tackle a bird myself. I feel like everybody has given me so much confidence today, learning all these new things from all of our chefs. You know, I don't know if this man needs an introduction to you, but I'm gonna give you one anyway. Our final guest is Chef Richard Ingram, cookbook author, private chef to the stars. Your new cookbook, Eating Well to Win, Inspired Living Through Inspired Cooking is out so much going on it's all about flavor with you right all about yes flavor. and also i love that it's all about reaching your peak performance having the food that makes the engine go right chef that is correct that is correct i'm so happy to be here so happy to be with you <laughs> Yay! i'm so hungry i cannot wait all right so chef give us a little rundown of exactly what's happening today and what you're going to make and just hit out of the park i'm so excited all right you ready to rock and roll here we go yeah. so the first thing that we're going to do i want you guys to take a look at this right here we're going to do a fried turkey today i've already started it of course and take a look at that Ooh. take a look at that fryer right that you can so see, fancy. yes, you can see that Jenny O turkey rolling around in there, okay, in that rotisserie fryer. So what we did here is we, we were going to show you exactly everything that I did to this turkey before we put it into the fryer. But before we start, what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to take it out of there. We're going to switch it off and you want to come in just like so, because I really wanted you guys to, uh, to take a look at this. Yeah. And and to really see how beautiful this bird is. Of course, you want, to, uh, you want to be able to grasp it better than I'm doing right now, okay? That's the problem but, with television, isn't it, Chef? It's always isn't it? complicated. Listen, two <laughs> minutes before we went on, I did this perfectly. <laughs> and now uh, the turkey is trying to show out, right? Hey, so as you can see, here. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and pull it out and we put it on our platter just like this. Now, what you wanna make sure, whenever you're frying a turkey, whenever you're baking a turkey, whatever it is that you're doing with your turkey, what you wanna make sure is that your turkey, the temperature is measured at 165 degrees. What you wanna do is take your thermometer, just like so, and we'll turn this over, okay, so that the breast side is up. Take your thermometer, and you wanna go right into the thickest part of the, your, uh, of your turkey breast, okay? It's not down here at the bottom of the lobe, it's all the way at the top of the lobe, which is right here, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let my son RJ come on in and take this bird away for us, okay? Hi, RJ. Is he here? Is he coming in? Where is there he? he is. Um, there he is. is. That's my boy. So say hey to everybody, RJ. Go Hi, ahead and take RJ. that. All right, be careful with it. There you go, sir. All right, and then my other son, Evan, is gonna bring in our other turkey, okay? So now, we're gonna show you how to do the fried turkey, but that's not it. The other thing that we're gonna show you today is my grandmother's smothered turkey wings, okay? Ooh. And those are gonna be so great as well. We're starting out with our Jenny O, there's Evan, with Evan. our Jenny O turkey. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with our Jenny O turkey wings here. We've sectioned them off so you have your flats and you, and you have your drums as well. But what I wanna do is jump back over to our turkey, okay? Now, 
Let's introduce all of our ingredients here. So we have here, we have our Creole seasoning here. We have our uh, chili powder here. We have some uh, seasoning salt right here. We have some red pepper. We have some curry. We have some garlic salt, some uh, lemon pepper. Here we have some hot sauce. I'm using crystal hot sauce today, but you can use any hot sauce that you want. And then this is where the magic is here. This is Italian dressing that has been strained. You have to make sure that you strain all of the solids out of here, okay? And then you put it inside of a pot and then you add one stick of unsalted butter and you let it melt, let it cool a little bit. And this is what you're gonna to use to inject your bird. Now, remember I just said that you wanna strain all of the solids out. Do not throw those away. OK, because what you're going to do is you're going to pack those solids along with the rest of all of the marinade inside of the bird. And you're going to let this bird sit for about four days in your refrigerator. OK, or if you got a big cooler, you could pack it with ice and sit it inside of there. You ready to go on how to season this? Let's go. OK, so now what I like to do is I like to turn my bird over. OK. And I like to add a little oil. We're gonna add a little oil. What this oil is gonna do is gonna help that skin to get nice and crispy, okay? So we add our oil. Then we're gonna hit it with some of our hot sauce, just like this, okay? Hot sauce gives it flavor, gives it color, and it also helps the seasonings adhere to the, uh, to the skin of your bird. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with some of our uh, seasoning salt. And yes, this gets pretty messy, so it's okay. Don't worry about it. Just put your apron on, put on some good music, yeah. and, uh, and and get to cooking. Am I right? Make a mess, have fun. That's, that's right. It. It's a so, family affair. That's so. That's fun. right. So now we got our Creole seasoning that we're adding here. Okay. Then we're gonna come in with our red pepper. Okay. Now, if you like smoked paprika, you can use that as well. You can use whatever you want. It's all up to you because this is your bird, okay? Your bird. And, and then we have here our chili powder. We put that on. We'll add some of our curry. And if you notice, I'm not using it all because we're gonna season the whole bird. You know why we seasoning the whole bird? Because wow. you gotta eat the whole bird, am I right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> so we're gonna add our garlic salt in there, just like this. And then our lemon pepper, Ugh, all right? So good. Yes, just like that. Now, we're not gonna rub it in just yet, okay? We wanna go ahead and turn it over, just like so. And as you turn it over, some of that seasoning is falling to the bottom of the pan. Don't fret, it's okay, because you're gonna get all of that seasoning and put it inside of your bag when you uh, get ready to store it, okay? So more oil. And then we'll come right back and do our same thing that we did before, just like this. And again, we're making a little mess, but that's fine. That's so we got, our, we got our seasoning here. And don't worry, we're gonna add some of that seasoning right inside of the cavity as well, once we get uh, finished coating the whole bird, okay? okay? Some more of our red pepper, okay? So are you bringing the rolls this year or have you graduated? Talk to me. No, I'm telling you, I've graduated. That was a long time ago. I was really the only allowed to bring the rolls or the, the you know, that two liter of soda. That that's you right. That was, that's right. Guys, that was but that's, that's always been something that, uh, that made me laugh is because, you know, you have stations, you yeah. have, you know, you have some family members that are given a chance to cook some stuff yeah. and they kind of screw it up. So then you get demoted to the paper plate detail, you know? Yes. But yes. I told you, once I started gardening, everybody let me bring all the vegetables. So that's how I like worked my way in on the <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm like, I'm doing a lot better, you know? Now I'm yes. in there. Now I'm I in love there. it. So <laughs> now take a look now. You got to get in here with your bird and you want to season it up. Okay. And as I told you before, you're gonna have some remnants of those seasonings on your, um, in your pan. So you wanna go ahead, turn that bird over. Take a look how beautiful it's looking already. And it's yeah. not even cooking, right? Yep. Okay, this is where that dark color comes from. So now we flip it over, just like that, okay? 
Then we go ahead and we get our, uh, we get our syringe and get some of that. Now, what I like to do when you get ready to, uh, to inject, you don't want to go straight down into the bird. You want to hit it at an angle, okay? Now watch, take a look here if you can see. See how that puffs up? That's all of that wonderful butter and Italian dressing going in there. Yeah. Now, what happens with melted butter once it gets cold? It starts to do what? Congeal, right? It'll get hard again. So now you have all of this hard um, Italian butter inside of, your, uh, inside of your turkey breast. And once it hits that oil, what's going to happen is it's going to melt and it's going to just expand all over inside of that breast. Okay. It's so sneaky. So it, as it solidifies, it's got some longevity to it there, and then it's going to creep out and, and get that flavor job done. There you go. I like that. I like that creep out term that you said just then. Yeah. That's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to creep out and get right in there. Now you see on the legs, you do the same identical thing. Then you come back into your thigh area and hit it just like this. So you want to catch it on both sides. Okay, now one thing that you don't want to do is to inject your turkey wings, okay? The reason you don't want to inject the turkey wings is because there's not a whole lot of meat there. There's more skin. And what will happen, and I don't know if you saw it on the one that I already uh, did just previously, is that skin will pop. Okay. And if it pops open, you're, the, 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 that precious meat right above the breast where the breast is and you have the um, the drumstick of the wing, that piece of meat right there will start to singe with the oil. Oh, so we do you, not want that. Right. And that's not what you want. You know, you want to make sure that all of that meat is nice and luscious and, 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 uh, and very juicy. So you don't want to necessarily inject yeah. your wings. Okay. Hey, so Chef, now once... People in the chat room are saying they never even knew this was a thing you could do. Like, really? never heard of it. Yeah. But, but that's wonderful. Every, yeah. Listen, this is what we're about. We're here to show people some new ideas and new ways to make, make some fun dishes for Thanksgiving and for your holidays on the whole, right? Yes, I love okay. it. Okay, awesome. So we're finished with this turkey. So my son is going to come on in and he's going to take this out of the way for us. And we're going to get started on uh, on our second dish, which is our turkey wings. Okay. All right. Looks like we got your, your RJ. There he is. There's RJ. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we do a little cleanup, and this is another thing as well. When you're cooking, you all you want to always make sure that you cook clean. And then cooking clean is very important that you make sure that you keep all of your raw product, like your turkey. Uh, with the turkey juices away from everything else because you don't want cross-contamination, okay? You definitely don't want cross-contamination. So we're going to go ahead and move our fryer out of the way as well. Mark. We're going we're to sit that down because you want to be very, very cautious because of the hot grease. So you want to be very, very, uh, you want to make sure that, uh, that you don't make any mistakes. So yeah. now what we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and turn on our fire and introduce you to all of the ingredients that we have here, okay? So okay. here we have, we have celery, we have our green bell pepper, we have red bell pepper, we have red onion, we have fresh ground black pepper, we have bay leaves, we have a, a little Creole seasoning, some garlic powder, some salt, some, um, what is that, some cornstarch, a little flour, then we have chicken broth here, and I've already added to the chicken broth some Worcestershire sauce inside of there. And then I have a little more chicken broth over here, which is gonna help us thicken up our sauce once it, come out of, once it comes out of the oven. Then we have some fresh sliced garlic, and then carrots. And I, and I love these carrots, the rainbow carrots, because once they're done, they're, then they not only taste wonderful, but it's a wonderful garnish, am I right? They're so pretty. They're so yes. beautiful. Yeah. Actually, everything you prepared there looks so colorful, Chef. It's so fun to see. Well, you know what? You eat with your eyes first. Am I correct? Yeah. You eat with your eyes first. So if it's not appetizing, a lot of times it's going to be left on that Thanksgiving table. And that's not what we want because we're working too hard to make this food taste good. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. So let's go ahead and add a little oil to our pan. 
just like that. Okay, not too much. Now we're going to put on some gloves, and then we're going to go ahead and start to season um, season our turkey. Now this recipe comes from my grandmother. I remember her cooking it years and years and years ago, and uh, she's watching down on me right now. So I make I want to make sure that I don't mess it up. Okay. Yeah. Hey, but, Chef, uh, what's, your, what's your grandma's name? Sarah. Sarah Grandma. Gibson. That was her name. And uh, and I've actually started a uh, culinary scholarship that's named after her and named after my grandfather, who was a chef as well. Um, it's the Ben and Sarah Gibson Culinary Scholarship that we give uh, about we give a thousand dollar scholarship away uh, each year. Oh, that's okay? so special. Yes. Yes. So now what we're going to do now is go ahead and take some of our garlic powder and just liberally sprinkle it right over the top, just like so, okay? A little bit of our garlic powder. Then we'll come in with some of our Creole seasoning. And I love, I love this Creole seasoning. And we're gonna hit it with a little black pepper, okay? Just like this. Turn the fire down just a little bit, okay? And then we'll come in with our salt just like this. And remember, you always want to do what? You want to season the front both and the sides. back, both sides, because you're eating both sides. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes, there we go. All right, so we're going, we're going to go ahead, hit it with a little more of the Creole seasoning, just like that. Okay. And whenever my grandmother would make these, it was something special. And then, um, you know, once she passed away, my mother took over the helm and my mother started to make the smothered turkey wings. And um, actually, I think this may be the job, may, may be the recipe that got me my job with my, with my, my longtime client. Uh, this is one of the first things that I ever made him. Oh, cool. Yes, it was one of the first things that I ever made him and it, and it stuck. This is a okay. start making recipe here. Yes, so now we'll hit it with just a little flour. Now what that flour, what the flour is gonna do is it's gonna form a nice little crust on our turkey wings, okay? It's gonna do that. And then some of that flour is also gonna to stick to the bottom of our pan. And that's gonna be called fond, F-O-N-D. Now, when my grandmother was making it, she just said, listen, just scrape up the little bits of stuff on the bottom of the pan and make your <laughs> gravy, you know? But going to culinary school, you hear that word fond, and, uh, you know, that was one of our lessons that we learned when I was in culinary school. So now we'll take our turkey wings. Okay. And there you go. If you can hear that, you know that you're working with something. When you hear that sizzle, okay. I can hear it. There you go. And we go ahead and we add those in just like that. Can they all fit? One thing that you don't want to do is crowd your pan. You don't want to overcrowd your pan. Got it. All right. All right, so we got this one plate that's done. We'll get somebody to come in, RJ or either Evan, will come in and take that plate away. When did you start cooking in preparation for this meal? People are curious. They want to know the secret behind the Hollywood of it all. When did you get Listen, started cooking? <laughs> I got up this morning at four o'clock. I was so anxious, even though we didn't start until 11 my time. I yeah. got up at four. And I paced around because I didn't want to, you know, get started too early. But I actually put the turkey wings that you're going to see. I put those in about seven o'clock this morning and they cooked all the way through the turkey. Uh, I started that about nine o'clock, I would say. And it was done um, at 10, 10. Um, okay. One thing about your turkey, you want to cook it for about five minutes per pound. OK, so for this turkey, I think it was like 13, 14 pounds. So I cooked it for maybe about an hour and 10 minutes. Um, and then I and then I went on ahead and I, I took it out. Got it. OK, right? Love it. but one thing that I did, even though I used the timer, even though I, I timed it with five minutes per pound, I still used my thermometer and checked it to make sure that it was at one hundred and sixty five degrees. OK. Yeah because you can still cook it for an hour and 10 minutes and uh, mess around and uh, your breast is, is still raw or your thigh meat is still raw as well. 
So yeah. you want to make sure that uh, you, you, you go ahead and you use that thermometer and make sure that it's done the way that it's supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Hey, okay, Chef, so, the house yes. smells really good. It just looks like it smells amazing over there. I'm telling you. Listen, guys, like, it is wonderful. Can you can you even see the, the effervescence yeah. coming up out of there? You yes, know? Yes. Okay. So now you see that we got our wings. They're nice and brown. They're nice and coated, right? So what we're going to do is go ahead and take those off and sit them over to the side. Okay. Some of them will let them go just a little bit longer. Beautiful. Okay. Now, can you see the remnants in the bottom down there? Okay. Let me see if the camera can pick it up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. You see it? Here. Okay. Yeah. So now what that is, that's all of that wonderful seasoning. That's right. all of that wonderful seasoning that, uh, that was on our turkey. And this is called Fond, F-O-N-D. Okay. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and add in our vegetables. Okay. That's our red bell pepper. Then we're gonna add in our carrots. Just like that. Next, our onions. Now we're really smelling like something in here. Okay. Then we're gonna add in our green bell pepper. I wish this was scratch and sniff, chef. I really <laughs> want to, like, smell the all of the different flavors, right? Yeah, you just bottle that, right? Exactly. And then we're going to add in uh, our garlic as well, okay? Now, we have all of that in, and we're going to go ahead and start to stir that around. And as we stir it around, those vegetables start to release their liquid, okay? And as they release their liquid, what that does is it gives us the opportunity now to start to scrape up that fawn off of the bottom of the pan, okay? Yeah. It acts as a release, okay? Now, you can deglaze with wine, you can deglaze with broth, or you can just let your vegetables, by sweating them down and releasing all of that liquid, you can let the liquid from your, uh, from your vegetables do the deglazing for you, okay? Yeah, cool. All right, yeah. so now we got that. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit more seasoning to our vegetables, okay? That's a little bit of our Creole seasoning that we're adding there. And then we're gonna hit it with just a little bit of salt, okay? And I like a little bit of heat. So I'm gonna reach back over here into our, uh, our, our fried turkey uh, rest, uh, ingredients, and I'm gonna add in just a little bit of our, our chili powder. Okay. Okay, we added that in now. Let's hit it with just a little bit of flour. What this flour is going to do is going to give us like a little makeshift roux, okay? Because we have oil in here, so we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of our flour. Hey, Chef, can you tell everybody what a roux is? Okay, what a roux is, is a thickening agent, okay? And the ratio for the roux is if you're using uh, butter, it's whatever amount of uh, butter that you're using to the amount of flour, it's equal parts. Okay, and it helps to thicken up your sauces and helps you to make your gravy. Okay, yeah. now we're going to come on in and we're going to add in now our broth. This is our chicken broth that we're using. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn this all the way up now. Okay, love it. All right, now in that broth, we added into that some of our Worcestershire sauce as well. Okay? I can never pronounce that word, I tell you. Listen, I've been saying it all morning to make sure that I didn't make a mistake on camera this morning. So you're not the only one. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> exactly. So now, as you can see, I'm moving my spatula back and forth because as this heats up, what we're doing now is actually deglazing some more and taking all of that remnants from the bottom of our pan and we are incorporating that into our broth, okay? Just Ooh. like this, all it right? So good already. Mm-hmm, okay, so now that we have that, now we'll add in our bay leaves, okay? And we'll add in our fresh thyme as well, okay? 
we add all of that in. You're leaving those guys whole, right? This is not something you're, are you, that's one big bay leaf or two big bay leaves? It's two big bay leaves. And in the recipe, it says that we're using 10 sprigs of thyme. And I like to use the whole sprig of thyme. And the reason I like that is for, for, for one, the flavor, but two, it looks amazing when you finally pour all of the gravy all over the top and uh, you see those sprigs of thyme just sitting there, looking up yeah. nice and pretty at you, you know? Yeah. So hey, what we have here, this looks like some confetti that we have in here with all of those different colors of the vegetables and things like that. And I love it. It's flavorful to the eye and flavorful to the palate at the same time. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Am I right? So good. Hey, Chef, we got a couple questions for you, too. I got another good one. All right. Uh, do you have to turn that turkey over while it's in the oven? Not do you have to turn the turkey over? No, you don't necessarily have to turn it over. Um, some people actually um, have cooked their turkey with the breast side down when they're cooking it in the oven. And the okay. reason that they do that is so that all of the juices can concentrate right inside of the breast instead of having it right side up. But okay. I have, I've never actually gone in and taken a turkey and turned it over uh, okay. while I was cooking it. Yes. Yeah, got it. Cool, that was a good answer. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> you didn't know, I feel like, you know. You got to have these are this is when you ask the questions, right? That's why you're absolutely correct. This is the time to ask. So now one thing that I like to do is I love to taste my uh, my braising liquid because your braising liquid is going to dictate what your end product is going to be. So let's get in here. And let's give that a taste. And this is something that you have to do with everything that you're cooking. Uh, you have to taste as you go. That's the only way that you're going to know if what you're making is good or not. And oh my goodness, that's saying something right there. That is good. That is good. Not just because I'm making it, but that is definitely something that's good. Now, if you notice, I'm taking the spoon and I'm putting it over here to the side. Why? Because you don't want to start double dipping yeah. inside of your sauce. Okay? And, 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 yeah, and a lot of people do a lot of double dipping out there. There's a lot of double dipping folks out there, all right? So we wanna make sure that you're not double dipping. But now, take a look at what we got going on here. We're up at a nice boil right now. So what we're gonna do is turn our fire down a little bit, and we're gonna go ahead and place our turkey right back in there, just like this. Oh, look at that. Best hot oh. tub ever for turkey. Look at yes, that. Isn't, that a nice, isn't that a nice sauna, a nice bath that we're putting it in right there? So good. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so now we got that in just like that. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and take and put our top on. And uh, my sons are gonna come right on out and they're gonna take these plates and they're gonna take this and we're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven and we're gonna bring everything else out so we can go ahead and show you the finished dish and show you how we're gonna finish this whole situation up here, okay? Just a good little reset there. That's, that's awesome. Exactly. There Thank you go. Jeff. While Thank we're you. doing that reset, I got a question for you. Yes. Is it safe for somebody who's a, a total first timer to think about doing a fryer and frying the turkey? Like what, what do you suggest for that? Any thoughts? Well, for, listen, you have to be a first time for, for everything that we do. You know, every it wasn't like I'd fried turkeys in my past life and then just here it is. I know how to fry a turkey. Yeah. Right. So you have to be very cautious. Number one, you need to adhere to the measurements. You have a minimum Greek oil level inside of your fryer and then you have a maximum oil level in your fryer. Do not go over the maximum of the oil that's supposed to be in your fryer. Because as you start to lower that turkey in, you're gonna have splatter everywhere, okay? okay? The reason, the main reason that these home fryers were made was because there were so many people that were burning their houses down, that were hurting themselves yeah. with the fryers that were in the buckets because you couldn't control the temperature, you couldn't control the flame from the propane. And let yeah. me tell you something, 
it happened to me as well a long, long time ago, okay? I uh, almost set the whole house on fire for my son RJ's uh, baby shower, as a matter of fact, wow. okay? So, yes, long, long time ago. So I think that what you have to do is make sure that you're very cautious. Um, and when you're lowering your turkey inside of the oil, you want to make sure that you lower it very, very slowly. If it's, as it starts to pop, you just ease off and then just slide it in. The same way that you do when you're getting ready to get into that hot bath. You know you don't just jump in there. No. You, you test it a little bit, you ease out, test it a little bit, ease out, and then you ease on in. Yeah. That's exactly the way that you're going to do with your turkey. Okay? Okay. Let's bring that turkey out. Okay? So now... We're going to go ahead and take this and sit it over here to the side, just like that. And they're going to bring in uh, the turkey wings and the broth. Cool. Okay, there we go. And we'll bring up, put our other pot right on here, just like this. And we'll go ahead and start it up. Awesome. Thank you so much. And where's our broth? And take this one, please. Okay. Now, take a look at those wings. Yeah. Can you see those? I can, yeah, that looks Yes, good. take a look at that, okay? And where's our broth? Thank you. That's my son, Evan, there. Thanks, Evan. <laughs> they said, thank you, Evan. Okay, so now, what we're gonna do here is we have our, we have our wings and they're already done. And you can still see some of the fresh thyme and you can see some of the vegetables on there. But what we wanna do, and this is the liquid that comes off of it. You see that is, it's, it's pretty liquidy, right? But yep. what we wanna do is we wanna thicken that up a little bit. So we're gonna take, put it in just like so. Put that in. Okay, bring this over to the side. Now we're gonna take our cornstarch, a little bit of our cornstarch, and here it is here, we have some more of our, our chicken broth, right? And we're gonna add our chicken broth, uh, excuse me, our cornstarch to our chicken broth, okay? And I would say the ratio of that would probably be about one tablespoon to a half a cup of okay. your chicken broth, okay? Now we'll go ahead and we'll stir that around one thing that you want to make sure is that your chicken broth is cold. You don't want to add your cornstarch to hot broth because what's going to happen is it's going to activate the starches and you'll wind up with a bunch of lumps. Okay? okay. You don't want that. So you want to always add cornstarch. If you're going to use flour, you always want to add your flour or your cornstarch to a cold liquid, never to a hot liquid. Okay. That and is a great tip, Chef. That is really good to know. I'm sure yeah. I would make that mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and, and and it happens. You wonder why did you, you wonder why you have lumps in your in your gravy or uh, in yeah. your sauce, and that's exactly why, right there. Okay, yeah. because it's already started cooking before you even put it in. So let's go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and put these a uh, couple of sprigs of thyme in there, and let's go ahead. This liquid here is cold, so we're going to add some more flavor to it. And add that in to our, to our uh, cornstarch mixture as well. And now we're going to go ahead and pour this in here, just like so. And you want to whisk it in. And as it starts to heat up, it will start to thicken, okay? Cool. Here I am again wishing I could smell that, I tell you. I wish you could too, because it's smelling up the whole place in here. <laughs> we got any other questions? I feel like you probably got a whole hungry crew there just staring at you cooking all yeah. of this. <laughs> everybody, everybody is here and uh, they're d thoroughly enjoying everything. Hey, Chef, how old were you the first time you tried to fry that turkey? I'm curious. Let me see. The first time um, I tried to fry a turkey, I had to be in my... I guess my 20s, I think. Yeah. So, so you, you've always been into cooking. That's so cool. I've always been into cooking. I started cooking when at the age of 10, actually. And, uh, you know, really seriously trying to get into it. Uh, I never, you know, I'd never set out to, to become a chef, though. 
I just wanted to cook because I love what food does. It brings people together. It brings families together. And, you know, let's, let's just keep it honest. If you go to a party and the food isn't good, the party is over before it even starts. Am I right? So true. You know, you're, you're, try, you're dancing on the floor and you're whispering in your dance partner's ear, where can we go to get some food after this, you know? Now, if that food is good, you're not worried about anything. You're dancing, having a wonderful time, and uh, you know, and then you get to eat some good stuff at the same time, right? It's so important. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna move some of this stuff over. And you see, we're still whisking. And the reason that you wanna continue to whisk is because that cornstarch is heavier than the liquid. Meaning, if you just let it sit just like this, the cornstarch will start to seep to the bottom of your pan. And then what's going to happen is it's going to burn. And then your whole, all of your sauce will be scorched at that point and it's, and it's no good. So you want to continue to, to whisk that sauce until it gets a little thicker and gets to the consistency that you want it to be. And then you'll be ready to go. Okay. Hey, Chef, how long do you think you're going to be cooking that for overall? Or, or how long would somebody be heating that up for overall? Um, I think from, from start to finish is about two and a half, three hours. Okay. okay? Um, the, the part that I, that we just went over, uh, with me browning the turkey, that's about maybe about 10 minutes, okay. but of course, most of your time will be in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. Most of your time will be in the oven. So now our sauce is ready. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn this off. Okay. And here's the amazing part. We're not gonna use a ladle and all of that kind of stuff. We're gonna come right over here. We're gonna move this over just like that. Okay. Give us a little cleanup. Yeah, okay. always cleaning. Oh yeah, always cleaning. You gotta work clean. So we're gonna come over here and we can bring, we can bring our big turkey out now and take a look at this. Watch this. Look how beautiful this is going to look going over that turkey. We're going to start right there on the corner. And we're going to do a slow pour. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Is that not incredible? Dang, that is fancy looking, Chef. Is that, you know, that's what we do. We do some fancy stuff over here, you know. Yeah. And yes. right, I did see that bay leaf pop out. That looks did so you good. see it? Yeah. Did you see it? Yes. And then we go ahead and we sit that right there. And oh my goodness, look what we got. Wow. Look who just showed up to the party. <laughs> Look who just showed up to the party. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So now, first things first, let's go ahead on to give this a taste. Yeah. Okay. I normally would go ahead and have a, a fork, but I, I forgot my fork, but I, I have to taste this. Look how tense that is. It came right Look, off the screen. Did you see that? Yeah. Did you see that with a spoon that happened? <laughs> okay. Now let's let's get in here and see what's going on here. Oh my goodness. When I tell you that that's incredible. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. I hope I'm not smacking you smacking in your ear. You got to that's that's half the job is the child uh, to let us know. Let me, do, let me tell you something right now. You just going to have to excuse me because this is incredible. You're eating and, for all of us, Chef. <laughs> yeah, I think my, my guys back here in the camera crew and the gentleman in front of me, I think they're plotting on me in here. Mm -hmm. You know it. Yeah, <laughs> thank God I got this knife in here. I might have to fend them off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, let's take a look here, okay? I want us to look at the wings, and you see here where I was talking about how thin that skin is, okay? Yep. I don't know if you can see it or not because it is, it's, it's kind of dark with all of the seasonings on there. Well, what happens sometimes is that skin breaks and it's okay that it broke there, but you don't want it to break up here. And this is the reason why I tell you don't inject up here at the top because this drumstick here from the wing is connected to this breast meat. And if that oil gets inside of here, it'll dry it out. It'll, it'll fry it and will dry it right out. And that's not what we want, right? Right. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how wonderful this is. Uh, this turkey is. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. You see that skin? Look at that. Wow. Mm. Look at that. Look how juicy this is. 
And look, can we get in on that? Yeah. Okay, take a look. Look at the juice coming out of there. Look at that. Oh. Beautiful, right? Good. So now let's go ahead and give this a little slice as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Juicy all the way throughout. And this is exactly what you want. And also, the skin is nice and, and flavorful as well. Wonderfully, wonderful, wonderfully done, uh, Chef Richard Ingram, if I must say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it is incredible. So now, a lot of people, excuse me, a lot of people have trouble carving their turkey. What I like to do is I like to come straight down the middle, just like this. And you have that breastbone right in the middle here. And when you fry your turkey, this breastbone will stick straight out. It'll come right up at you. And this is actually your guideline. You come right on the side of it, just like this, okay? And pull, pull. And now you can come right along the rib cage. If you, if you put your fingers right in here, just like this, right? You yep. come right along the rib cage and come right around and it leads you right to that thigh, okay. okay? And when you get to that thigh, now you can actually just come right in, just like this, and pull him apart. Gosh. See that? Look at that. Yeah. Look how easy that came apart. Wow. Okay? You're making this look really easy, Chef. Listen, it is. Now you take your thigh, okay? And I'll show you how to do that. You take your thigh, you come just like this, and slice that open. Let's see if we can find that bone in there. And this is a slicing knife, so it's a little difficult sometimes, but you can turn it. There we go, all right? Now, look at that thigh meat. Look how juicy that is, right? And you got that skin. You wanna take your skin, don't discard it, sit it right over there to the side. And now you can easily just come right here and take all of that meat right off of the bone, just like this. Okay, take a look at that. Okay. Oh, looks good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now let's give that thigh meat a taste. Make sure it has the same seasoning as everything else. Mm. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It has <laughs> the same seasoning as everything else. I just want to let you know cool. it does. And you know, sometimes the skin from the breast might taste different from the skin on the thigh. So, you know, we got to go in and we got to taste that too, you know, Very just important. to make sure that it's, it's, you know, it's the same, you know? Deeply important. Deeply important. And that is it. <laughs> this is wonderful, 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 wonderful. So what you do is once you get your, once you get your, um, your turkey breast off and your turkey thigh, you can take it, once you cut it off, then you just go ahead and you slice it on the, di on, the, on the bias and you just lay it out real nice on your platter, okay? Let's go ahead and get this all the way off. See that? Yep. So now, now that you have your, your breast off, next thing you wanna do is just come in just like this and do nice thin slices, okay? Nice thin slices. What, what tends to happen is we get a little rambunctious uh -huh. And we start to slice these really big slices of turkey. And um, you find we wind up having a lot of waste. And then not everybody gets a chance to enjoy it. If you slice it a little bit thinner, it'll go a longer way for you. Okay. I love it. That's a great tip. Because mm -hmm. we've all been there where we say, you know what, let's go ahead and let's just do one turkey. And uh, who's ever carving the turkey, they're, they're ready to eat. So uh, they're, they're carving hungry. So yep. when you carve hungry, you carve super, super large pieces. Am I right? Yeah. And then the, next thing you, then the next thing you know, you don't have enough turkey for everybody. And then uh, that person that carved the turkey, next year, what are they doing? They're bringing, they're bringing the napkins. The That's right. They're bringing the rolls. They're bringing <laughs> the napkins. You've been demoted. You have been demoted. And when do you find out that you've been demoted? you find out the very next year, two days before Thanksgiving. 
you hyped up about carving the turkey and they say, no, no, thank you, sir. You go ahead and stay behind and just bring in the potato rolls and maybe next year you'll earn your spot back again, you know? That is, that is bad <laughs> talk, chef. <laughs> so to make sure that that doesn't happen to you, you want to make sure that you just go ahead and you carve that turkey and you slice it up real nice and thin. And um, the same with your thigh meat, it's a little bit more difficult because you have that bone in there. So what you want to do is just take your bone, stand it up, and just go right down to the edge of your bone, just like so, okay? And get all of that going. And of course, what I like to do, I go ahead and I let everybody else have the meat and I save the bone for myself. All of the bones go into a little bowl for myself and I just have those as my little after Thanksgiving snack once everybody's gone. Yes, so yes. Good. yes, so now you have your white meat, you got your dog meat there, and if you're worried about your drumstick, that's totally fine. You come right in and you just slice it right off, just like that. And you can literally, look, I'm not even slicing right now. Look at what I'm doing. Look at this. It just, right it just peels right off. It peels right off, just like that, okay? So now you take that and you want to take these little tendons out. Nobody wants to eat those, nope. okay? And there you go. Nicely done, wow. okay? Nicely done. Chef, that turkey looks like a painting, I tell you, like some Renaissance painting or something. Listen, I've been, I've been trying, I said, listen, if I ever mess up a turkey, it would not be on this show today, I'll tell you <laughs> that. So I made sure I got up extra early, I seasoned this turkey and fried it up real nice so that we can have a great show so that it, it would taste amazing. And I'm so happy that, uh, that you like the way it looks and I'm so happy that I like the way it tastes. Yeah, I wish, <laughs> I wish I was sitting at your table right now, man. That Me is too. So awesome. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Me too. So awesome. Wow. So what are you doing for Thanksgiving? What are you making? Uh, I'm here at the house. I think I'm going to do the turkey breast. I've got the Genio turkey breast uh, in the freezer right now, ready and yes. ready to go. So I and I love, I love that Genio turkey breast. The, yeah. You have the oven ready? Is that the oven ready that you have? Yeah. yeah amazing amazing and you can you can you know you can go ahead and put it in with a little salt and pepper or you can get real fancy with it if you want to you know and yep. it cooks up just as nice and that skin gets super crispy you know what are you going to serve with yours well in my husband's family it's the corn souffle i'm a green bean casserole kind of gal and uh -huh. you know i think that's important mac and cheese i don't know of course you know? Of the course. Potatoes, I got to do it, but they got to be real. For me, I'm into the real mashed potatoes. I spent of a lot of time making the flakes mashed potatoes in my life, and I moved no. on to the real. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I yeah. Know. We won't listen. We'll never discuss that again. That'll sorry. never happen. <laughs> yeah, we're only using the real stuff. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if I have the energy, you know, I have a new skillet I love, so I'm thinking about maybe doing a cornbread, just because there's something so rustic and fabulous about making cornbread in a skillet. You know. Oh my goodness. And you know what? You can take that cornbread, right? After Thanksgiving, it's something that you could do that's so amazing. You can take that cornbread um, and crumble it up, the rest of the cornbread that you have, take some of that oven ready uh, turkey that you got left over, yeah. right? And mix all of that together and uh, add, a, add a little egg to it and you can make a whole nother souffle out of that. Ooh. A turkey, cornbread souffle out of that you know yeah, yeah. That, so like don't a dinner or a breakfast it's not, it's no like that could be dinner. for dinner that could be for dinner or it can be like for brunch or something like that I wouldn't necessarily say for breakfast yeah. but it could be like for a brunch type of uh, a brunch type situation because you already know after Thanksgiving nobody's getting up early in the morning no. because you got to sleep you know, you got to sleep some of that off. So when you get up, you're going to get up and you're going to be hungry. But what what happens? You got some cornbread left in there. You got a little bit of your Genio oven ready turkey or yeah. some of your Genio fried turkey left over. You chop both of those up. You add a little egg to it. You may add a little cream, maybe a little cheese. Whip it up real nice. Put it inside of a, a nice uh, baking dish with a little butter, some fresh herbs and put it in the oven and let that bad boy souffle up. 
And oh my goodness, I'm hungry right now, ready for some of that. Oh my gosh, Chef, that's so <laughs> fabulous. So tell me, I want to hear what your side dishes are. If you're, I mean, you guys, you're looking like you're you're sitting pretty right here. But what are you going to serve on the side for yourself this Thanksgiving? Well, this Thanksgiving, um, of course, we're going to do um, our fried turkey, but we're going to have candy yams, which is another recipe from my grandmother. Uh, her candy yams. We're going to do collard greens. Uh, we're also doing mac and cheese. We're doing corn cheese as well. Have you ever heard of corn cheese? Nope. Listen, let me tell you something special right now. Corn cheese is where it is. Corn cheese, you take fresh corn, you saute it up, get some nice color on it, put a little onions, put a little garlic in there. Then to that, you add in a little bit of heavy cream, you add in some condensed milk, okay? And you add in some uh, some red bell pepper, a little uh, little green bell pepper, and then you add mozzarella cheese, a little provolone cheese, and you mix all of that together. You put a cast iron skillet, maybe that new skillet of yours. You yes. take and you put that in the oven at 400 degrees, right? Let it get piping hot. Then you take this corn cheese mixture and pour it inside of the hot skillet. And as soon as you do, it starts to sizzle and that cheese forms a crust right around the outer edges, right? And you put that bad boy in the oven for about 25, 30 minutes until all the cheese starts to melt. And let me tell you something, you can eat that as a side dish, you can put it uh, as an appetizer, people can use it and have chips to go along with it if they want to. It's so many different things you could do with that corn cheese. It is amazing. But yeah, so we're gonna have macaroni and cheese, we're gonna have corn cheese, collard greens, uh, candy yams. Um, and I think I'm gonna do a, a real big uh, salad as well for everybody just to, you know, as a nice pa pa palate cleanser, you know? Yeah, I love that. You know, I saw a really good looking salad on the Jenny O on the Hormel food site. Um, it was kind of like a walnut apple salad, which sounded nice and fresh and flavorful. You could throw mm -hmm. that in with all the Thanksgiving goodies on the table. Yes. I mean, I feel like we're prepared this year, Chef. I don't know about you, but I learned a lot. You know everything already, so. No, <laughs> not every, not everything. Don't give me too much now. I don't know everything. I know a lot about a little, you know? That's what I know. I know a lot about a little. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to talk to? Imagine the, the home cook at home who this might be their first year making a bird. Is there anything you want to say to them? Give them a little bit of like confidence. Well, the, the first thing that I want to say to you is food is food is love, right? So you have to approach it as such. Don't be frightened when you get ready to start cooking. The best thing about cooking, the easiest thing about cooking, should I say, is to be prepared. The same way you saw me here with all of the ingredients out, measured out, ready to rock and roll, that's what you do. As you're cooking, if you have to stop and go and get pepper, you have to stop and go and get salt or whatever these specific ingredients are that you have to get, it becomes a task. You get frustrated and then you say, you know what? I hate this. I'm not ever doing this again. The way to, the way to not feel like that is to make sure that you're prepared, have all of your ingredients lined up and ready to go, okay? Now, yeah. Thanksgiving is not the time to experiment. I will say that to you, okay? This okay. is not the time to experiment. If it's something that you have never cooked ever in your life, don't do it on these big holidays. You have to test it out. So if you want to fry a turkey for Thanksgiving, why not fry a turkey in October? Why not fry a turkey to, in, in August? Just to give it a try to see how it works out, you know? If, at worst, you may, you know, you may burn it up. OK, but then you probably may have some parts in it that you can use. Right. But what you'll know is the next month or the next time you try to do it, you take notes about what happened, what what went wrong. You take those notes, compute them in your head and then you do better next time. Listen, I'm standing here in front of you. I have burned up a whole bunch of stuff in my life <laughs> and sometimes still burn it up, but nobody knows it. OK, yeah. so make sure that you're not intimidated. Go into it with love. OK, and understand that everybody that you're cooking for, they love you. OK, yeah. now they may not forgive you if you tear everything up and you may be back on bread duty. But remember that they love you. So make sure that you cook with love. That's my advice to you. 
Chef, this has been absolutely incredible. I feel like not only did I get so many new ideas, but I had such a good time. You are, you have so much <laughs> joy in you. It was really fun to be with you today. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. I enjoyed myself and it was such a pleasure being on the show with you. Oh, so much fun. You guys, if you like any of these recipes, both Chef and Jenny, I will have a link to them on social media so you can follow up and check it all out. Thank you to everybody for joining us today. It has been so much fun. I am starving now, so I'm going to go figure out how to resolve the fact that that turkey is not in my kitchen. Um, Listen, and what I'm going to do is have to fight these guys off in here because I already know that they're plotting on everything that's going on in here, you know? <laughs> no, it, but I think that's the joy, right? Is watching people destroy that fabulous thing you made and just with so much happiness. So Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I wish you the best this year for Thanksgiving and for everybody watching. Hope, wish you all a very happy and healthy holidays. And thanks Same from, to you. Thank you, Jenny O. And, and thanks to, you know, if you need any resources you need, hit JennyO.com. All the social media channels too. I mean, you can dial in to the hotline, 1-800-TURKEYS. If you have any questions, there are people who are ready and waiting to answer them for you. That's so, right. You know, I was on the 1-800-TURKEY hotline yesterday, as a matter of fact, answering yeah. questions. Yes. I love it. So thank you so much, Chef. And thank you to everybody for watching. And hope you all have a beautiful Thanksgiving. Stay safe and be blessed.